Hey, Zach, welcome back to the podcast, Porn Brain Rewire. I'm glad to have you back here for some more interesting discussions, right? <laughs> hey, Dr. Lee, I'm looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. I enjoyed the last one, so I'm looking forward to this one. Yeah, me too. And I appreciate you being here because I really think um, people can learn from you and I kind of waxing poetic together mm-hmm. about your experience, especially as a an example for people who are struggling and are stuck in a loop and they just have no idea how to get out of that loop. And, you know, you're a testament to if you do the right things and you have the right support, you can keep moving forward. So I love it. And then being able to talk about the brain mechanisms behind it is obviously always fun for me too. So yeah, I love it. What are we talking about today? What's on so, tap? <laughs> so we're going to be talking about the benefits to avoiding porn. So this is supposed to be the lighter, more fun, looking forward to, because I think it's so serious and there's so much shame and guilt tied to it that like, we have a tendency not to celebrate the successes because we're so fixated on the failures. So I wanted to talk about, hey, here's some ways that you can watch out for that your brain and your actions are going to start to improve as you get away from porn. Yeah, I love it. And I just recorded a podcast with someone else yesterday and we we're talking about, and I kind of stayed focused on it because I think it's really important. It ties into what you're saying is that, you know, when I talk with people before they get into our program, they're, you know, and the biggest question is how long is this going to take? And what I was talking about yesterday is that it doesn't have to take that long to begin to feel the benefits. And that's something that I wanted to make sure we focus on that it doesn't take that long for you to know you're moving in the right direction and for you to get all the way there that might take some time, but to know that you're moving in the right direction can, can happen pretty quickly. And yesterday, the gentleman I was talking about, he talked about how he gained sobriety pretty quickly once he got into the program, but he didn't feel free. Freedom came later on. And, you know, after 90 days, he knew he was moving forward in sobriety and setting and laying that foundation for continual success. But it wasn't until not that much later on, but a little bit later on where he felt truly free, where the pull back wasn't there anymore. And so, you know, let's dig into how people can feel that first initial, yes, my brain is unwiring and I am moving in the right direction. And then how they can feel my brain's rewiring and I'm moving towards hardwiring in the new better brain pattern. Sure. Unfortunately for me, the process of getting sober has taken 14 or 15 years. <laughs> so why you and I exist is to make it so let's shrink 15 years to a year. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And, you know, and I always share the experiences of the first client that I worked with, the one that, you know, really ramped up. I didn't really care about porn before, but ramped up my passion is because it was five excruciating years, like not just, and so like, I think it's a really good example because some people, when they make the decision and they commit, it can be pretty quick to go from where you're at to sober to free. And if you don't commit, but you pretend to commit is really what happened in, in the case of the, my client, which I'm calling Sam these days, where it was like pretending to commit and then seeking out all the wrong people on accident, the hijacker, seeking out the wrong people to help, giving the wrong advice, faking, you know, steps, having, you know, difficulty getting into that, but just kind of making it a really tough five years. And then finally committing when the losses were so high, because we know that's how the brain works. When the losses are high, you know, commitment can happen much more easily And really that's because his wife was making him do it. And he wasn't even on board with the program until four years and, you know, four and three quarters years later. But, and for you, you know, if you made that commitment to yourself, but it's, you didn't know what to do and you didn't have the right strategies and you didn't have the right support, people can stay in this thing for decades. And so many people I work with, they've tried and then kind of, you know, settled back into just the you know, what they had going on, the habit they had before, and then try again. And it takes 14 to 15 years. Right. And it's frustrating for me because right now I'm going through your program. I'm like halfway through it. I'm really loving it. I'm like, this is the freaking roadmap. Like (laughs) I didn't have this Mm -hmm. and I had to figure it out on my own. And it's the worst. And so I'm really hoping that we can get this out to people so that they can have the roadmap so that it's, it's not, you're doing it by yourself and it's not you figuring it out on your own. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I just wanted to comment, and I know I shouldn't focus on haters, but I'm going to just share one hater comment because of course, hater comments hit the nervous system a little. And there was a hater comment that said, you're really good at promoting your program. And I thought to myself, I'm actually terrible at promoting my program. Like I hardly talk about it when I'm talking about, you know, I'm, I have, there's 400 videos on YouTube, but I barely mentioned my program. I just mentioned at the end real quick. What I'm very good at promoting is the actual solution. And that I'm very proud of because the program that I built is built on the actual solution. So I want people to know, like, I'm not promoting a program here. I'm promoting the solution and the way I put it together absolutely works. And there's a few other people in this space who have a program that actually works. Mm -hmm. There's many people who have programs that don't work. So I just want people to get into a program, like you said, that doesn't take 15 years that doesn't take an excruciating five years, that takes 90 days to get towards the sober and you know you're moving towards it and you're moving towards freedom within the next year. You're laying that foundation, you're feeling better every minute. So just, just to, I just wanna make sure that it's explicitly out there. That's why I want people in the program because it is the solution. It's right. the roadmap. Right, right, right. Well, let's uh, let's get started on talking about the benefits. Right? Yeah, let's. Uh, so you, you've been seeing when you, yeah. uh, when you're avoiding porn, yeah, so absolutely. Want, I, can, I can start. Uh, I'm so love for you too. I think my number one best benefit for avoiding porn is better sex, which is what <laughs> I've always wanted. I wanted great sex and, you know, See, that's the, that's the man's perspective, but it's so funny right. because uh, someone also wrote on YouTube yesterday, you shouldn't be talking to men about porn and masturbation. Cause you're a, uh, you're a cat. It's like the cat teaching a dog tricks. And mm. what I was going to say is my perspective actually isn't even the woman's perspective perspective. It's the neuroscience perspective. Cause my number one benefit is you stop damaging your brain and you heal your brain and your brain works better for you for your whole life long. But of course, men want more, better sex, right? <laughs> right. Well, and what's been impressive about listening to your material is it seems like you get it. So I, I, I hear the argument of the dudes are like, we want to hear a dude because a dude will understand this. <laughs> what you'll find is as we're having a car, our conversation, I'm just going to be repeating a lot of the things. I'm just going to be giving personal examples of all the things that you talk about anyways. So don't listen to the haters. haters yeah, I know. Haters. I don't know. And, but you know, it really is, Having, you know, the human experience, life is supposed to be fun and enjoyable. And if you're going into a screen to escape it, and especially if you have a honey next to you that you should be enjoying and having a fun, exciting, engaging time with, and you're not, you're wasting your time in the screen instead of investing your time in your partner and in your own life. So, you know, having a good sex life is part of that. And you know, that's why in so many of the videos, I say, if you don't have a honey, get out of the screen and invest your time and energy in taking the steps to do that. And so many of the guys I'm working with are doing that right now. And it's so cool. The benefits, like to talk about the benefits, and then you can tell us, you know, you can share what you were going to is approaching people has become like the biggest gift that they've been able to give themselves because their social anxiety has gone down and they feel more confident. And you shared this last time. So it's like, there's so many benefits, but uh, I digress. Go on, share what you're going to sure. cut so, you off. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're, you're great. You're great. So porn really sets the expectation bar really, really high. And it also sets the expectations to something that doesn't even apply to sex. So, so for instance, you know, if I want to become a great pilot, I don't go watch Top Gun. Like Top Gun is great. You'll you'll see the cool spinnies and stuff that the the airplanes do. Those are great. But if I actually want to learn about how to be a pilot, I go sit in a cockpit. I have someone teach me. I go to school for it, right? I actually learn about what it is actually to be a pilot. So watching that movie is setting your expectations too high. So for instance, if you were going into sex thinking sex is 100% visual, you are going to be so disappointed because sex isn't 100% visual. Sex is partly visual, but it's also touching, it's foreplay, it's emotions. Whereas when you're watching porn, it's 100% visual. It's all about the visual. So not having these unrealistic expectations of what sex is going to look like, how sex is going to feel, mm -hmm. improves how sex feels. 
So that was yep. the first point. Do you have any thoughts Definitely. on that? Yeah, I love that because, you know, I feel like I have to remind people more frequently than I want to that it's fake. Porn's fake. <laughs> and right. so like Top Gun's just a movie. It's fake, you know, and I love that because you can't learn real skills and abilities from just watching something that's fake. And I also love what you say is that if you want to become a pilot, you actually have to put some time in experiencing it, not just consuming it. And there is a level of intention and being able to engage and to be able to have that, you know, be an experience. And so, and you're totally right. Porn makes it so that it's a performance. And then you learn to be a performer in your own sex life instead of being someone who's experiencing that and is trying to make it a mutually shared experience. And that's very different in the brain too, just to bring it back to the brain mechanisms is when you are in performance mode and you're trying to gain as much pleasure as possible from either consuming the performance or trying to do it yourself, you're just looking for as much dopamine as possible. And like you said, you can't get it in life. It doesn't exist. That's why porn's a super normal stimulus at the, on the second hand is that you shouldn't even want it because it's frying your brain because it is super, it's too much. It's not healthy. And it is the thing that's causing erectile dysfunction. That's causing brain fog, causing lack of motivation, anxiety, depression. It's frying your brain. So when you go back into the world and there isn't enough dopamine there, your partner could never give you right. that amount. Right. And so continuing with the pilot analogy, on other problems with, that porn causes to sex. So if you're sitting in your pilot class and you're imagining Tom Cruise in his cool jacket and you're like, man, I wanna be cool like Tom Cruise and you're completely missing what the teacher is teaching you, you're not <laughs> engaged and you're, you're out of it. Your brain is in another place, right? Mm -hmm. So part of the problem that I had seen in my own life I've, and I've talked to guys who have have had this problem as well, is that because you are committing, hopefully eventually to one person and you're like, this is the person I wanna be with, this is the person I wanna have sex with, this is the person I wanna spend my life with, you, you begin to have a problem with a lack of variety, right? Because that's all that porn is, is variety. So what happens to a lot of guys is that they begin imagining other women or they begin, begin imagining different situations with their partner because there may be things that she doesn't want to do. And so when you begin doing that, you basically use the person that you're with as help with masturbation is basically what it is. You're not yep. in it. You're not trying to con connect with this person and it feels the same. So it's not something I'm, I'm proud of, but you know, there, there was a time where I was struggling with that. Mm -hmm. And I saw that when I was engaged with my wife, it felt amazing. I felt connected to her. Sex didn't come with guilt or shame. It was just completely awesome. Great. But there were times where I began imagining things and it disconnected me. Mm -hmm. It decreased the enjoyment and then guilt and shame were tied back to it. It felt very similar to when I was used to masturbate and watch pornography and it yep. felt the same way. And that's, and that stemmed from me watching pornography is that I'm like, I got to have variety. I got to have variety. And that's, that's a problem because that's not what yeah. sex is. Absolutely. And that's, and I, when I, the way I talk about it is the Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde syndrome. So, and especially when you're on a journey out of porn consumption, fantasy becomes such a major issue mm -hmm. and because your brain's used to going there and it wants that and it wants those extra high levels of dopamine which you can't get from your partner if you're doing things that are healthy and remember a porn habit is the most manifest manifested way of hypersexuality hyper meaning too much not healthy so when you're in those moments with your partner and your brain has to trail off it's trailing off into the Mr. Hydeness to get more dopamine because it's not getting the amount from your partner that it's used to from the screen. And that will be a transition period 
from sobriety to freedom. And it's a journey. And the and again, of course, when we do these podcasts, I like to be able to give people actual action steps. So an action step there is when your brain tries to go to fantasy, don't let it because you're giving it more dopamine within the experience with your partner, which means it'll take longer for you to be able to be with your partner at those lower levels of dopamine, healthy, good levels of dopamine, serotonin, oxytocin that give you that experience instead of the performance. So if fantasy comes in or you feel the need to go off and to think about new novel, you know, either acts or people or anything that you've seen in the past, bring your brain back to the present and get back into the experience. And, and, you know, I know a lot of people struggle with that because some people have erectile dysfunction or delayed ejaculation during that experience. It's not the same as it was, but when you don't use your partner as an object for your own pleasure, you're using it as the experience, it begins to shift. And that might not be perfect. It might be messy for days, weeks, months, hopefully not longer than months. If it's messy for years, it means that you've either watched porn and your brain's just fired up those neural pathways again, or you're going to fantasy too much. And a bunch of people, but I've, t- I've many people I work with will tell me this. And one guy in particular, and I probably said it to you before, where he's like, so I'm supposed to be thinking about my wife when I have sex? Yes, you are, my friend. Every time, <laughs> not sometimes, every time. And, you know, that is a new, that's not a thing he's done for 25 years. So if that, if you're not doing that, you know, and, and if it's difficult for you to do that, there needs to be re-evaluation with your sex life and your partner and conversation, communication, and interaction around it. Right. And I know this podcast is more about the benefits of porn, but just how I had to stop because it happened the way that it's always happened to me in the past where I say, I'm never going to do it. And then it slips in once and I'm like, okay, I won't do it again. And then it increases and it starts to become a habit. And I, I caught it pretty quickly seeing that there were problems. And first I went to, she actually asked me one time, like, you didn't seem like you were all there. And I lied. And one of my rules is that I don't lie to my wife. If I, you know, as best I can, right. It really, truly don't, don't lie. No, I, and, as best I can, you and I will have to talk about that off camera. <laughs> right, right, right. As best I can. So, <laughs> because it should be, the thing is when it's radical honesty, as you know, from Anna Lemke, like that's what frees you. And I'm sure, right. and I'm, I'm going to let you keep going because I'm sure there's right. shame associated with that. Right. Yeah. And, and so first I, I talked to the guy that's head of my, uh, like overcoming porn group, you know, and he's like, can't lie to your wife, man. You gotta, you gotta tell her that you lied to her. And so I knew going in, this was going to wreck her. And so, you know, and different people with different situations are going to have to really think this through. But for me, it was in order for me to stop this, this thing that's becoming a habit, I have to talk to her. And like you were saying earlier, I have to put consequences on certain actions and reward good Mm -hmm. actions. Mm -hmm. And so that was a consequence. That was a major consequence to me. And it really pulled me out of it. And that's amazing. See, see, I would encourage, uh, and let me just interject for one second. And then I promise won't be too long is that I try to encourage everybody to just get honest with their partners and that Mm -hmm. like, I get it. And I know what you're saying about that it's going to be each person's journey is different. And I just wanted to highlight the parameters of why. So you're still with your wife, which means she, it did wreck her and it became Mm -hmm. a difficult thing for her to handle, but it's rupture and repair. So Mm -hmm. if there's a rupture in your relationship and if she's emotionally mature enough to handle it enough in the moment and to work with it to become even more emotionally mature, don't get me wrong, it sucks. And there's a ton of pain and everybody involved is stressed out. But the rupture becomes the repair. You actually have a better relationship and you get to be your true authentic self who doesn't have to hide stuff from anybody. And, you know, I think we all deserve to be in relationships like that because Mm -hmm. life's way too short to have to hide anything from the person who's supposed to be your partner in crime and have your back. Mm -hmm. And so the cool thing is if you can tell her that you've messed up, And, you know, you're on a journey and you're not a perfect person, but if you can tell her that you've messed up and she can be with you in that, 
might not be great, but she doesn't bounce on you and she doesn't abandon you because at the mm -hmm. core of a lot of this is fear of abandonment too. Mm -hmm. So when she shows up for you and she doesn't abandon you and you tell her the truth and you don't abandon her back into porn, you're mm -hmm. both better off for it and your relationship's better off for it. But I That's work it. with people who, you know, they've got 30, 40, 50 years of lies and they don't want to have to own up to 50 years of lies. And I said to one guy, like, why not? At this point, like, at this point, either either repair that relationship with your wife or figure it out and at least have an amazing 20 years, last 20, 25 years of your life, free from all the shame of all of this. Like, you know, people at, at the end of their life, they regret that stuff. Moving through the number one regret at the end at when people are dying is living an inauthentic life. Mm -hmm. So like, let's do the tough stuff to get authentic and be who we are. And right. then make it the best version. Well, and I'm happy you went in that direction because another benefit that I was going to mention today was becoming a better version of yourself. And so throughout my relationship, like I was saying, I've been as brutally honest as possible. And so there was a time when I had put up all these blocks and I was having a hard time getting access to stuff. And I was dating my now wife and one of the things I was doing, she, she was living in her house and I was living in a different house. And so I would leave her house at night and I would drive home and I would start to get this desire to stop at Walmart and like pick up something that I can have for visual stimulation, right? Mm -hmm. And so she called me the first time I show up and she's like, hey, how are you doing? I just wanna call, call you real quick. And then she's like, what's that noise behind you? And in my head, I wanted to be like, you know, I got the radio on or something. I'm like, yeah. oh, I'm in Walmart. <laughs> and she's like, oh, are you getting like a treat or something? You getting a snack, a midnight snack? And I was like, no, no, I'm not. <laughs> she's like, well, what are you doing? And I could not figure out a way around not telling the truth of why I was at Walmart. That happened three times where she yeah. called me on my way home. Hey, what are you doing? I'm at Walmart. And it stunk because yeah. every time I knew where it was going to go. Yeah, and, I, I, I love that. I have a lot to share on that, but finish first. Yeah, and, right. I, and, and, and so I'm no longer running around hiding myself, doing things that I feel guilty about that like, oh, if she catches me, if my wife catches me and believe me, dudes, <laughs> to an extent, she's always going to know like something, <laughs> something is up. I've I did not know this. It's like a, it's like a superpower women have. I did not know they had the superpower. Mm -hmm. They know, they know mm -hmm. something is up mm -hmm. and you know, she's always found out whether it's because I've had to tell her the truth in a situation, or she could just tell by my demeanor that totally. something is not right. Yep. And so I can be myself every day. I don't have to be a different person yep. and that gets us closer. And that takes all that weight and all that shame and guilt off me. Absolutely. So let me ask you this. This is the thought that I was going to have, and then I'll kind of talk about the takeaway. So what were those moments eye opening for you or her? Like, just let's just use the Walmart example. When she called you and you had that twinge of panic on, on time number three, did it resonate for you or for her? Like, man, I cannot believe I'm, I have to pick up this phone for the third time and tell her I'm at Walmart. Or on the other end, when she called you and she's like, he's at Walmart again, trying to get some visual right. stimulation. I think those moments can be really powerful in the transformational journey that we're talking about. And, and I'll just tell you why. And then maybe you can tell me like kind of your internal state or if you and your wife had discussion about this, because when people watch porn, that's a pretty easy thing to go, you know, I know I watch porn because it's porn and it makes my brain feel good. And it's so great. But then when you find yourself in these like lower level, I need to get a hit behaviors that are porn adjacent, someone that I talked with called, and I like that they're like, you know, slippery slope behaviors where, where you're like, I can't believe I'm doing this again. Cause I need a hit. Did that help you go like, yeah, this must be a problem and help and your wife, even your wife, when she's like, like, I get why he watches porn because porn's porn, but like a third Walmart trip, this must be an actual problem for him. Right. And 
and that was the because I told her straight up when we first started dating, it was within a couple weeks. I was like, just so you know, I have been struggling with porn since I was 14. She knew right off the bat, but she didn't really know. Like I didn't lie and I did come clean, but it was in moments like that where and there was lots of moments where she caught me trying to trying to look stuff up and she had to know the depth of the problem and it stinks because it's painful but the good things about pain is that like you said earlier I have a person who loves me enough to go through the pain of knowing that I'm fantasizing about being with other people. Mm -hmm. And so that shows me that she does truly love me. And for me, it, it provided consequences to my actions. And I wish that it had been able to come in another way than hurting my wife, mm -hmm. but it didn't. It came in the form of hurting her, realizing there are consequences to my actions, mm -hmm. and then continuing to move away. I, th I believe since that third time, I, I haven't ever been back to Walmart to do that. Like, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's been, a, it's been a couple of years, I think. Yeah. So Yeah. I mean, that's great. Know, and that's what I mean is it. like, you know, yeah. where, you know, those kind of lower level behaviors really can be like, what am I doing? Like, you know, mm. I, I, right. and being honest about it, even though it really does stink for everybody involved, oh, but the then, worst. then yeah. like, you don't have to do it anymore. And right. it's like, uh, it's really powerful. People have no idea the power behind that because then you can mm. just be well she trusts me so right. you can't you can't put a price on that she i can tell her something so for instance the software i'm using right now to kind of block my computer for whatever reason it picked up victoria's secret i didn't type that in mm -hmm. but it went to her uh, -huh. uh and she was like were you typing in victoria's secret and i was like no babe i wasn't doing that i yeah. wasn't yeah. and she so then she okay. believed you like, yeah believe exactly you. Yeah. Because yeah. I've proven to her that I will tell her the truth when it, when will it hurts. Destroy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. I love it. That's great. That's awesome stuff. There you sure. go. Sure. That's amazing benefit. Amazing benefit. So that's, that's two. So we've got better sex, yeah. better, become a better version of yourself. You want to do one more? And yeah. Wrap it up? Let's, let's. So I have, I have two in mind. I'll mm -hmm. let you choose which one you would like to go with. I have. Yes, that's great smarter so you end up becoming smarter slash more successful uh oh or clearer conscience so and mm -hmm. i have a direction i could go with either one is there one you would prefer yeah let's go with uh let's go smarter and more successful because i think or at least i feel like you know we've we've kind of talked about i know we can definitely go in more with clearer conscience right okay. but mm -hmm. i love the idea because i'll just kind of lead in with a brain okay. idea and then you can mm -hmm share because so I always talk about how when you watch porn and especially if you're caught in a porn habit your brain's electrical energy pattern swings to the extremes to extra fast and extra slow speed and it will either stay there which will keep driving you back into the screen or it'll swing and you'll have the pendulum effect you'll have high highs low lows but the point is your brain's performance pattern is out here less than optimal when your brain's performance pattern is in the middle, when you're not watching porn and you're getting on purpose, then your brain is working better. And this middle performance pattern is actually associated with higher IQ. Not that I even really care about IQ, but the point is when your brain is in the middle, you can get into the zone. You can tap into your creativity. You can figure out how to implement it which not only gets you more money, makes you feel better and you have ideas and you're in that thrive mode in creation. You're not out here in survival mode where you're just figuring out how to escape the feeling that your brain's giving you. So it literally goes back to when you come out of the screen, your brain optimizes itself and now you're able to use it. And then obviously that's a huge benefit. And that benefit shows up in every single realm of your life in terms of success. Right, right. Yeah, it, it actually, porn addiction shrinks the gray matter in your brain. And for, for people who- And the are, white matter too, actually, both have been shown. Wow, so- And, and white want, and gray you, matter. And you, it, it literally damages the cells yeah. structurally and it significantly impairs function. 
So mm -hmm. structure and function are impaired and it knocks out the frontal lobe and desensitizes the reward center. Those are the main things. Right. When I was in group the other day with one of the guys was talking and he was right. He write, wrote out like a journal entry and he was reading it to us. And he was like, man, you know, I looked at porn the other day and I just, I, I couldn't concentrate at work. And I just I had this fog in my head where I just couldn't think clearly. And I was like, had we, had we talked about this before that that's a sign that that would happen? He's like, no, nah, man, I'm just, I was just writing it down. I was like, yeah, dude, like that's, that's a big sign that of the, the damage. So when you, when you avoid porn, you think clearly, you make better choices and you're going to do better at school, do better at work. Men typically are success driven. If you want to be more successful, stay away from this stuff because mm -hmm. it will, it, it won't make you successful, but it will remove a hindrance to becoming successful. Absolutely. And, you know, when you get on purpose and you figure out the thing that you want to do, that's the best way to be successful at the thing that you want to do. It's the thing you care about. You know, that's what purpose is. Purpose is that you're contributing to the world in a meaningful way that's important to, to you, not your brother, not your girlfriend. It's the thing that you want. So you have that internal drive in the first place. You're internally motivated to make the thing happen. But porn is totally blocking you from doing that because your brain's, you know, all messed up and it's damaged. So absolutely like, you know, it, I, so I believe if you get on purpose and you bring your brain back, it's almost guaranteed success, you mm -hmm. know? And like, I think it will make you successful. Purpose is what makes you successful. And then not, not blocking yourself or self-sabotaging yourself from being able to use that flow brain pattern you know, when you're in flow, you basically can create the thing that you want to. You can be the best painter, the best plumber, the best parent. You know, that's why it shows up anywhere, any anything that you want to do. And, you know, but it doesn't mean you'll be the best soccer player in the world. No, unless you inherently like soccer and are good at it, you know. So that's what purpose is. You're good at a thing and you want to do it. And then then you get your brain in the right spot and uh and I, it's in the program where I talk about Mihai, Csikszentmihalyi and flow state. And that's what flow state is. The people who are most successful in the world, they're tapping into the innate thing that's in them and then using their brain so well that they're able to just flow through their lives and they're able to, to create the best version of themselves in the work that they want to do. Mm. And everybody deserves that. That's right. That's right. Yeah. If, if you're thinking clearly, so there's, there's meaning and then there's purpose. So you're talking about purpose. Purpose is the how you're going to get to meaning. Meaning is the why. Why are you doing things? Mm -hmm. um, I'm forgetting the philosopher's name at the moment um, that said the man who has a why can bear almost any how. Is that right? Did I flip it? Mm, no, um, that's, that's right. Um, I think that's, that's right. right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nietzsche. Yeah. I think that's yeah, Nietzsche. Nietzsche. Um, and so if you're not thinking Nietzsche. clearly, how are you going to discover me, your, your meaning, right? How are you going to say, okay, what is most important to me? Why am I doing what I'm doing? Right. You're not thinking clearly. So you're not going to even begin to think deeply. Right. And then purpose is, okay, once I know my why, your why could be family, it could be religion, it could be politics. Well, okay, so now the, the how I'm getting to the why is I'm, I'm going to become a pastor. I'm going to become uh, an artist, like you said. I'm going to become a politician. I'm going to become a father. That is how mm -hmm. I achieve my why, my meaning. Right. And you're not going to even begin to, to be able to concentrate on these things with any depth. Um, if you're, if you're looking at the stuff regularly, you may yeah, have on it some, but it's yeah, not exactly. I know same. when people, and you know, I think we talked, you and I talked about this is that sometimes people think it's making their work better or their purpose better because they feel so good. You know, their brain feels good at certain points, but it, it definitely tips into where it's detracting from your ability. And I was going to bring it back to brain stuff for a second, and then we can put a bow on it, button it up is that when you go into porn, it's constant pleasure seeking to offset pain. 
We know this. And some people will go, that's not me, but inherently you might not know it's you. you. If you go a couple layers down, generally speaking, there's a reason you're going into porn and it's to get intense pleasure for a time to offset some pain. And that's the pendulum effect. You swing between pleasure and pain, which is the total opposite of when you're on purpose and you're seeking meaning. All purpose and meaning comes back to a feeling and the feeling should be peace. So, you know, I like to keep things easy, like instead of pleasure and pain, peace and joy and happiness should be at the end of the why. And, and people forget that too, because when in my, in my program or in the solution, when we set goals for the future, it's not just achievement in like a classic modernized societal way. It is that we set goals and we understand the feelings that we're trying to get from our goal. So like, why are you with your wife? You're with your wife because it's a feeling of love and peace and safety and contentment and laugh, you know, being able to laugh and have fun. Those are all feelings. That's the feeling that you get. And that's what, when you're on purpose in your work, you feel driven to the feeling, being able to contribute to the world and to help people. And it makes you feel good and whole, and it gives you peace at the end of the day. And people forget that. Like, it's not just to achieve, it's the feeling at the end of the day. Right. You could, you can just see your wife as the, the thing I have sex with and Mm -hmm. the thing that brings me food or whatever Neanderthal thinking, or you can see this person as a whole human being that you want to connect with closer and more intimately than you have with any other person. And to me, I would rather have a deeper meaning to my marriage than I like that she has sex with me, you know? Yeah, exactly. And that's not satisfying. That was the point about, you know, the gentleman that I work with, it's like, you know, and, and, you know, it had been 25 years that he and his wife barely had sex and he was keeping all these lies from her. Like, what's the point? Even if you could get 10 more years out of a genuine authentic relationship that was shared and deeply connected. And that involves intimacy and vulnerability, which are two terrifying things to most people. And and they're, they're extra terrifying if you're roped into porn. Okay, let's wrap it up. So our takeaways are going to be, there's oh, there's massive amount of benefits. We've only covered a couple of them here. Seriously, it's gonna make you, it's gonna make you smarter. It's going to make you more successful leaving porn behind. It clears your conscience by radical honesty. Zach and I are gonna talk about the fact that he's almost always, <laughs> almost always honest with his wife. We're gonna work on that one. Oh, I know my husband and I, we have a thing where it's like, where he's like, I, you know, I'm so honest with you. I share my feelings. This is what he says to me all the time. I share my feelings with you more than any man on earth because like, he'll wake up and be like, my shoulder hurts. And he's like, I've been on this cleanse, you know, and it's making me bloated. I'm like, dude, you shared the honest truth about what's going on with your physical state or issues you see with me. Let's start sharing more feelings, you know? <laughs> and that's what he's like. I share it more than anybody, but, uh, you know, so the point is then you can connect with people on a much deeper level. And, you know, he and I laugh more than any couple. We, it's our, our wedding anniversary is next Wednesday night and oh, Wednesday yes. is our 20th wedding anniversary, which is really cool. Oh, so we went to buy new wedding bands. We're getting new wedding bands for our 20th anniversary. And we were at the jewelry store and the, we weren't even doing anything, honestly, but we have a really cool connection. We always have, you know, we have a, a fun relationship, a nice relationship. And, uh, the guy goes, the guy kept saying the jeweler who was helping us. He's like, you two are funny. <laughs> like, you know, we weren't even doing that. He's like, you two are funny. <laughs> and then my husband got the sizing thing stuck on his finger. Nice. I knew it was going to happen too. He pops that like the big ring with like 50 other sizing rings. Right, right. Pops it onto his finger real fast. And I'm thinking, dude, you probably should start with a bigger size and you definitely mm. should be sliding that thing on slower. Right. It was stuck on his finger for like 20 minutes. They had to use nice. Windex to get it off. Nice. And so of course it became this thing. But, uh, you know, I'm like radical honesty involves more than how your physical state is today. Mm. Um, what was our first, what was our first benefit? Because I was sex. bringing this. Better sex. How could I forget that one? So there's so many benefits. So if you that's the one are, I'm focusing on. Exactly. And 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 you know, that's why, you know, people really the urgency comes to leave porn behind when they figure out they have erectile dysfunction or they might. So, you know, not having to worry about that and having better sex is definitely a major motivator for people. So and and if you are looking for help, um, you can go to drtrishley.com. And uh, Zach, I was going to tell you, I actually haven't told you this, that I was going to have a Zach page made 
on drtrishley.com. So there we'll put okay. the videos of you and we'll get some information about you and you'll have your own page there. So if people are looking for more information or more content from you, we can get it going right there. Sounds great. I thought that'd be cool. Um, okay. So we will see you next time. Thanks for joining me again, Zach. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks.